So you're a development lead, project manager, or scrum master, and you'd like an easy way to create a project plan and divvy out the work to your team. No worries, Dev Planner allows you not only to divvy out those tasks, but also allows you to determine how your project is progressing. It all starts here in the project management area. Simply add a new plan using our plan wizard, and then you can add tasks and assign work to your team members. As they work each day, they'll log their time worked and their hours remaining. As you can see, you can create hierarchies of tasks and decompose those into individual items with estimates. And then you can also see person by person how everyone is allocated. If you do over allocate someone, notice that a red exclamation point will show next to their name. Once you click that, it'll take you to a resource availability report. The resource availability report will show you day by day how you have this person allocated. Notice that if you've over allocated this person on a specific date, it'll turn red. If you click the plus sign, you'll drill in and you can see the details that make that up. Use Dev Planner's rich dashboards to produce burn down charts, resource availability reports, plan velocity, as well as slipping tasks. The slipping tasks report will show you each person that has tasks that should be 100% done by today but for whatever reason or not. If you click on the graph, it'll show you the details. The detail report identifies each engineer that you've assigned tasks to, and it shows specifically what they've been allocated towards and what their percentage complete is. Once the dust settles on your project, run variance reports to see how well you did against plan. Notice that we have project management reports that show Gantt charts, profitability, release information, resource allocations, as well as variances. We also have a number of timesheet reports that can be helpful for you to figure out who's entering time and what they've been working on. Let's take a look at a variance report. From the variance report, you can compare project to project. You can drill into a specific project and a specific project plan and look at each person on your team and see how they contributed. Notice that for each task that they've been assigned, it shows estimated hours as well as actual, and then it'll show you a variance. You can always see what percentage complete done they are as well by looking here to see that. Notice if they finished earlier than you expected, it turns green. If they were overdue or overallocated, it turns red. Notice if their effort was less than expected, it turns green. If their effort was more than you expected, it turns red. Notice that it color codes the variances. The red variances allow you to easily see the ones that took longer than you thought. Now let's take a look at a timesheet by week to see what type of time entry we've received from our team. As you can see, week by week, person by person, we can discover how much time they've logged and specifically what they worked on. It also totals it up for the entire week. Now that we've had an overview of Dev Planner, let's take an example. Let's imagine you're working on a team and you needed to create a reporting system for an order entry system. And you'd like to be able to track the work using Dev Planner. Let's also imagine that you're using Agile and you'd like to do it in Agile Sprint. So you're now planning out the first sprint of your Agile release. No worries, we'll create the first project plan. To do that, we'll go to the project plans area and we'll press on Add New. From the project plan area, we'll type in the name of our project plan. Maybe this is order reporting system, and maybe this is release one, sprint one. Now, if you are using Agile, you'll probably want to choose the Scrum Master here for the assignee, because this will be the person that's managing this particular project plan. Since we are using Agile, we may want to lock in start and end dates. If we want to do that, we simply choose the first date and then we choose the second date. Notice that I can use the up and down arrows on my keyboard to increment or decrement dates. So if we're planning out a two week sprint, we'll set that to expire on this particular date. If you're using more of a waterfall type development environment, you would simply leave these burn down dates blank and then you would check auto adjust burn down and then it would adjust the start and the end date based on the tasks you place into the plan. But since we're using Agile, I'll unclick that and it'll lock in these dates. Once I press continue, it'll then create a blank plan for us and then we can begin adding tasks. Let's imagine that we have a couple of tasks that we want to add here, so I'll go ahead and add three major tasks. One is for some da database work. The next task here is for some order entry reporting. 
the next task here is for order entry dashboards. Now let's imagine within the database work we want to break this down into multiple items. To do that we simply press the plus sign and indent underneath it by pressing the orange arrow. Then we'll plus, press plus again and then we'll be back into data entry mode. So we'll put in some order reporting views and some order reporting store procedures. I'll go ahead and add some additional tasks here as well. Once we've entered all of our tasks, we can then estimate those tasks. Let's imagine that the views are going to take 8 hours to work on. Store procedure 16. Let's imagine that the new orders report is going to take 24, the declined orders 32, and the on hold 16 hours. Finally, let's look at the incoming orders trend chart. And let's say that that's going to be a 24 hour task, and then the canceled orders a 16 hour task. If we want to then assign these to different people on our team, we'll have Steve do this first one, we'll have Steve do the second one, and then we'll have Bob Developer do these, and then we'll have Joe do the remaining items. At this point, we probably want to save our plan. We can do that by simply pressing the Save button. Notice that it is now showing us that Steve has been over allocated for these particular days. The reason for that is we're having Steve work on these two items on the same day. To prevent that, we can actually set up predecessors so that one task follows on to the other. So we can have these things work sequentially, or we can put some additional uh, parameters in there to make the predecessors work exactly like we need them to. Then we'll press save again. Okay, that cleared up our, our over allocation, so we're in great shape for this particular project plan. If you do need to move tasks around, notice the little red arrows here. You can take that and drag a set of tasks anywhere you wish, and that will reformat your plan. You can also set working time for each individual. Notice the working time area. From here, it allows you to come in and set how many hours a day each person on your team works. You can also set up a standard calendar for uh, holidays and time off. So if you wanted to set a standard calendar that would apply to everybody, you can do that. Then you can go to a specific person and override that calendar by adding additional vacation time. One of the nice features here is that you can also create task templates. Task templates allow you to set a series of tasks that are commonly used and bring those onto the plan. You can see the task templates area here and anytime you want to add items from a task template, simply press the add wizard button and choose task template and it will allow you to do that. One of the questions we're asked a lot is, what if I've been using Microsoft Project for years and I would like to take a project plan that I have in Microsoft Project and place that into Software Planner? Can I do that? Or what if I wanted to do the reverse of that? What if I wanted to take a Software Planner plan, bring it into Microsoft Project so that I can use some of the more in-depth Gantt charts? Well, you can do that. You simply install the Microsoft Project plugin and you'll see an item here called Software Planner. So let's say that we wanted to take a plan that's already in Software Planner and bring that into Project. We would simply import it. Once we click Import, we'll then choose the name of the plan, and then we press Import. Once we do that, it will then import that plan into Microsoft Project, and then we can see the Gantt chart very clearly. So we've shown you the Project Manager or the Scrum Master view here where you can manage all of your project plan deliverables. But how does the end user use it? In other words, the engineer that just needs to log their time towards tasks being assigned and be able to review their hours. When they log in, rather than seeing this hierarchical plan, they'll simply see their task list. Once they see their task list, they will be able to add any time at the end of the day to those. To do that, they would simply come here, find a task, press on the hourglass, and that takes them into hours entry mode. They can then say how many hours they work for the day and how many hours are remaining. They can also make notes on here about specifically what they worked on. They can add additional time if they like and then they can press submit to save that time. Once the time is then saved, they can then see that time entry over in their hours area. This will show you all the time that you've entered for a particular time frame. As you can see, managing projects is easy with Dev Planner. If you haven't signed up for your free copy of Dev Planner, do it now. 
we'll actually send you to the sign-up page at the end of this movie. Thank you.